So welcome everyone to the third Thursday meetup of the West Orlando WordPress meetup group. I'm Tara Nelson, a co-organizer and host. West Orlando WordPress is an official WordPress meetup group affiliated with the WordPress Orlando and WordCamp US meetup groups. In this presentation, we are going to cover the controversy around Matt Mullenweg's controversial statements about and actions against WP Engine over their allegedly low contributions to WordPress source code and alleged misuse of the WordPress trademark. The very public feud has had a disparate impact on WP Engine hosted customers and on the open source co software community. It is also affecting novice WordPress users who are not well versed in the difference between WordPress.com and WordPress.org, trademark law, and the risks of choosing hosting companies that don't play well with the open source community. You'll learn what you can do if you're a WP Engine customer and if you host elsewhere, how you can prepare a contingency strategy if your host is similarly targeted. <clears throat> Rob Watson is the founder and co-host of the West Orlando meetup group, our meetup group here. Um, since 1996, he has been creating websites for businesses and organizations, small and large. In 2009, he founded webadextrous.com as a freelance website design boutique. In 2015, he began to evolve it into a lean full-service web agency with a specialty in maintenance, security, and performance optimization of WordPress websites. Rob is also a space exploration enthusiast. He and his wife, Shannon, are parents to four children. At this point, I'd like to invite everyone to mute their microphones and enjoy the presentation. Rob, thank you so much for being our presenter this month. The time is now yours. All right, thank you very much. <clears throat> so good, good evening, everyone. Um, so today we're gonna address the recent and significant controversy in the WordPress ecosystem. Um, as someone who's been in, we in web development for nearly uh, three, you know, three decades and uh, and working with WordPress for over 16 years. I've, I've seen my share of debates about software and open source, but this one stands out as a significant one because of the huge impact it has on millions of website owners and billions of people around the world who visit those sites. So today's meetup is Matt Mullenweg versus WP Engine. All right, so WordPress currently powers about 40% of websites globally, underscoring its importance in our industry. And our focus today is on the dispute between Matt Mullenweg, a co-founder of WordPress and CEO of Automatic and Word, uh, WP Engine, a major player in, the Word, in WordPress hosting. So before we dive into this, let's establish some key concepts for anyone who is not familiar with them or who could use a refresher on this topic. So open source software is a term that we need to know. It's software whose source code is freely available for anyone to view, modify, and distrib distribute, and is developed collaboratively, often in a community of volunteers and companies. So the philosophy behind open source is to enable innovation by allowing more than corporations to own and develop and distribute the software to everybody else. So it's kind of the Gutenberg press of the information age. What helps drive that is the GNU or, or new uh, general, public general Public License or GPL. Um, it's, a, it's a specific open source license that ensures a particular open source software remains free and open. And so that any derivatives of that software are also released under that same license. So for example, if you wrote a real estate marketing software under the GPL, anybody could download a copy of it and make it do whatever they want, as long as they release it back to the market with the same license so that others can also do the same. And this is what is known as forking. So WordPress is released under the GPL, the GNU Public, Public Licensing. And this means that anybody 
including everybody here on this call, can use, modify, and distribute WordPress for free, as long as you release it also under the GPL. So you could literally take a copy of WordPress, make it your own, redistribute it, sell it, as long as whatever you make also goes back out to the community <clears throat> under the same terms. So WordPress.com and WordPress.org are often confused with each other. WordPress.org is the home of the open source WordPress software released under the GPL. And WordPress.com is a commercial hosting service run by the company Automatic, which is the company that Matt Mullenweg owns and, and operates. So WordPress.com and its products and services and its plugins and themes and user data and privacy policies and the branding and the trademarks are not necessarily subject to the GPL license. So Automatic is a private type of company and WordPress.org um, is more of the, the open source community. In contrast, w WP Engine, represented by the robot on the right, as is one of the is 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 a WordPress focused ho hosting company among hundreds of other similar types of companies, um, and it benefits from the GPL by being able to use and modify and distribute WordPress freely as well. So they are under the same terms, um, like Automatic and its WordPress.com hosting service. They also can build their business around hosting and supporting WordPress without having to develop the core software from scratch. So they can they can benefit from what the community has created. They can also create, host, modify, and fork their own premium plugins without the GPL, but they won't be able to host those plugins on WordPress.org unless the plugins are GPL. So those plugins have to be re-releasable re out to the community. So armed with the knowledge of those interactions between open source and licensing and organizational structures, we're now ready to jump into the recent controversy. So the problem began uh, months earlier, actually, but it became more public recently with Mullenweg's blog post on ma.tt, I love that uh, domain name, on September 17th, 2024. So he criticized companies because they benefited from open source without adequate, con adequate contributions. Matt specifically called out WP Engine as a prime example of talking, or, uh, sorry, of taking without giving and of profiting immensely through extractive business practices, according to him, that don't result in community contributed improvements to the software that they benefit from. So to put this into a non-technical framework, imagine that you have a society where farmers open source their seeds and they give them away for free. Restaurants take the seeds, grow vegetables and fruit and use them in the dishes they sell to customers. But instead of improving and remitting a portion of those seeds, from the harvest back to the farming community to help it also improve, they simply sell all the food they grow to get a higher return on capital. That's the root of the criticism that Mullenweg has put into the public conversation. So this was followed by Mullenweg's presentation at WordCamp US in 2024, where he, uh, he quoted from his blog post and elaborated on those concerns. And the directness of his approach caught a lot of us in the community off guard and divided hardcore WordPress professionals about whether this was the right move. And I will share that uh, the link to the YouTube, uh, to the live uh, thing that he did so that you'll see at the end. Um, but I'm not really here to take sides. I just wanna help you understand the core issues. So let's, let's kind of break those down. So first there's the matter of contributions to the WordPress core. Mullenweg, is alleging that WP Engine's contrib contributions are too low compared to their market position. They are one of the biggest hosts out there. They have a lot of name recognition and a lot of people turn to them because they recognize who they are and what they do because of the WordPress trademark. So leading into that, we have trademark concerns. So the use of the WordPress name comes with some certain responsibilities and obligations. And there are questions currently about WP Engine's adherence to those guidelines. And then last of all, the involvement of private equity. WP Engine is owned by a company called Silver Lake. Silver Lake has raised concerns about the balance between profit motives and open source principles with their actions in the marketplace, according to Matt. So the situation kind of escalated quickly. Um, WP Engine faced a temporary ban from WordPress.org resources and a significant move in our uh, our ecosystem. So that's that's nothing small. Both parties issued public statements and the community's response was mixed and, well, passionate. 
WP Engine filed a lawsuit against Automatic and Automatic responded in kind with its own lawsuit. So people left each company to work for the other. Some WP Engine employees leaked the contribution numbers and other problems as they saw them to Automatic and then took their offers to be uh, employed at Automatic. On the other side, some Automatic employees were outraged at the way the situation was publicly handled and threatened to leave their valuable ro roles. An Automatic offered alignment offer buyout packages to its employees. 159 people took the offer, but 91% of the remaining employees stayed. And then today, they offered a second buyout, allowing them to resign in, in exchange for nine months of pay if they didn't agree with Mullenweg's actions. So there's still a lot of turmoil going on in both Automatic and WP Engine. Also, this just happened a couple of days ago, the Gravity PDF plugin um, has announced that its free plugin will no longer be hosted on WordPress.org's plug plugin repository, but will be directly distributed to users via gravitypdf.com. The WordPress.org also forked the free GPL Advanced Custom Fields plugin, very popular plugin, that WP Engine was investing in and maintaining along with a premium version that was non-GPL. So they have their, their advanced uh, custom fields pro and then the free version. So the free version was hosted on uh, wordpress.org and then the pro version was sold through the uh, WP Engine uh, ecosystem. So then Automatic renamed it Secure Custom Fields in the WordPress plugin repository, but they didn't reset the download count or the reviews which gives kind of a false impression about what that plugin is and how it developed. So um, they were claiming to have fixed a longstanding security issue that had existed in advanced custom fields. Some of that was debatable. And then this, this was a big deal because it was always theorized that Automatic could do this to any plugin, that they could effectively take credit for the work of other people. But this was the first time it, it seems to have happened and so publicly. So other plugin developers are now pretty fearful of drawing Matt's ire and having their own plugins hijacked as well, as evidenced by Gravity PDF also bailing from WordPress.org. And then there's what quickly happened to Secure Custom Fields. So while it's called now Secure Custom Fields, it very soon uh, began to have vulnerabilities of its own. And users who were not informed about the swap suddenly found themselves wondering what happened to their advanced custom fields without knowing what, what this new secure custom fields plugin was all about. So they've had to then swap back into their advanced custom fields by downloading a copy of it from WP Engine and basically installing it or sideloading it over the top of secure custom fields to start over again. Um, not a lot of data has been lost in this, but it is a huge pain, especially if you have 200 plus websites that you maintain. So the stakeholder impact has been not insignificant. Um, it affects various groups differently. Uh, WP Engine customers already face uncertainty uh, with getting updates since WordPress.org servers block uh, WP Engine servers. Um, and a workaround was put in place, but it's not ideal. And it is still subject to risks should WordPress.org take further punitive action against WP Engine. The broader WordPress community is engaged in debates about open source ethics and responsibilities, and people are calling out hypocrisy on both sides of the conflict. There are discussions about forking WordPress as a whole and starting a new ecosystem independent of WordPress.org and Automatic and other hosting companies. Novice users might find themselves confused, especially given the existing complexity of understanding WordPress.org versus WordPress.com and the potential for confusing a confusing mix of fragmented software and service uh, offerings. So the legal and ethical considerations here are also quite complex. So for example, uh, Matt Mullenweg has actually recently asserted personal rights over the WordPress.org ecosystem and trademark. Um, he further claims that WP Engine has created a hacked up, bastardized simulacra, his words, of the open, open source code and thus is infringing on Automatic's WordPress trademark rights. But trademark law in open source context isn't always that straightforward. Moreover, this situation has sparked important discussions about the ethics of commercializing open source projects. 
Chiefly, if one person is responsible for the direction and significance of any piece of open source software, it is that software unconditionally open source? Or do users and companies that benefit from, from or need to prepare to act according to the expectations of the software's initial creator? That's still up in the air. And is it ethical for companies to take more than they give? Can their participation in the open source marketplace yielding a net benefit to the community by boosting the software's popularity and not just hours of software development also be counted as a contribution? Many people would say yes. So looking at the both sides of this, it's crucial that we kind of take both of, both of those sides in, into play. On the one hand, there are legitimate concerns about the commercialization of open source projects. And we've seen examples like MySQL and, or My, MySQL as some people pronounce it, OpenOffice, Elasticsearch and others, uh, where, they, where the increased commercial involvement led to changes in licensing or community dynamics. But these cases highlight potential risks for WordPress, such as reduced openness, community, community alienation, or fragmentation of the ecosystem. On the other hand, we have to recognize the importance of commercial involvement in, in open source projects. Companies like WP Engine play a vital role in WordPress's successes and widespread, widespread adoption. They provide professional grade hosting, invest in infrastructure and security, and often serve as a bridge between WordPress and large enterprises. So their marketing efforts expand WordPress's reach and many core contributors are employed by these companies. But there is no, also no shortage of WordPress hosting companies who are more than willing to grab WP Engine's market share by playing by Mullen, Mullenweg's rules. WP Engine could have avoided these issues by contributing more to the WordPress.org open source team's efforts to improve the software, and Matt could have looked further into the future at the likely impact his statements and actions would have, and instead shaped his messaging to avoid alienating developers, designers, and site owners. The challenge lies in striking a balance. We need to maintain the open source spirit and encourage contributions while also fostering a business-friendly environment that allows companies to sustainably offer services and to compete and innovate. So what's next? Well, you still have choices. For those using WP Engine, it's wise to review your options. If your automatic updates or one-click updates are blocked, you can still download plugins and updates from the Open WordPress plugin repository. They still work. You just have to go through the extra step of downloading them. And then you have to upload them to your site. You can also consider moving your site to another of hundreds of WordPress hosting companies. So there's no shortage of options on that front. For all WordPress users, this serves as a reminder of the importance of having contingency plans in our ever-changing tech landscape. So be sure to have daily backups of your website, hourly if you can, and be ready to jump to another hosting company if your current hosting company is targeted by lawsuits or legal actions from WordPress.org. And it also can't hurt to have an audit plugin such as Simple History so that you can see the changes that happen on your website due to all of these actions. This happened to me the other day where um, the WooCommerce plugin itself, the free one that is published for free, just disappeared off of a website. And when I looked into those logs, I found that WP Engine had just, oopsies, automatically removed them. So I had to go back and put it back in. So that's a good reason to have backups and uh, also a history plugin. So is this game over? Far from it. The playing field will continue to evolve as developers and hosting companies shift their business strategies to adapt to changes in what is still the most popular CMS in the world. This dispute between major players in the WordPress ecosystem raises important questions about contribution, trademark usage, and the role of commercial entities in open source projects. As members of this community, we have all have a stake in the outcome and the future direction of WordPress. So the goal should be to create a win-win situation where companies can thrive while supporting and enhancing the WordPress project. This could involve clear guidelines for commercial involvement, recognition of various forms of contribution beyond code, and ongoing dialogue between community leaders and com commercial entities. So I encourage everyone to stay informed Consider how you can contribute to the WordPress project. And remember that our collective efforts drive the success of open source software. The future of WordPress depends on our ability to navigate these complex issues collaboratively. 
So I thank you for your attention to the to this uh, uh, presentation, and I hope that it has been useful to you. All right, that was awesome, Rob. Thank you so much for that overview. I definitely filled in some gaps in my knowledge with that whole controversy. Thank you.